so it's a very nice program and I hope I will try to convince you that it's time to uh, revisit a bit the wavefront aberration. I would like to thank all the co-authors uh, who are listed on, on that first slide. Um, I have also a little financial interest uh, which may be relevant with NIDEC here. And um, I think uh, that um, we, until now, we really did not have what we need in terms of uh, accurate uh, and clinically accurate wavefront measurement and wavefront interpretation. Um, what we should have now today is uh, accurate, realistic, objective refraction prediction from wavefront uh, analysis. And what makes the essence of wavefront analysis is that you can have through uh, higher order aberration decomposition, an accurate, uh, realistic uh, uh, metric or set of uh, coefficient from, from which you can compute metrics, which should be, again, accurate and predict, for example, the retinal image. So you can address complaints such as halo, glare, uh, monocular aplopia, etc. And yet, if you look at that example, it's uh, one out of many. Uh, if you do refractive surgery, and we, when you address patients with complaints such as, uh, doctor, it's fantastic, I'm spectacle free, but at night I have halos. If you do uh, um, a reference acquisition, you'll be surprised sometimes that you find coefficient quite elevated. Tilt may not be a big issue because it doesn't change really much the image quality, but it's, 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 it's first odd that you have tilt elevated in a patient. But what's most really um, intriguing here is that you can find that despite the emetropia, the patient has a very high myopic defocus coefficient, whereas the eye is emetropic. Of course, you have positive circular aberration, which pops up here, and that expects it because of the halo. But what's, that's, could, that could be still ac uh, acceptable. But what's not really acceptable is that if you ask the wavefront aberrometer to compute a uh, simulation of the retinal image, it really does not fit uh, what it may be on the actual uh, patient's retina. As you can see here, for high order, that is just the high order. So for a perfect corrected patient who sees 2010, the visual predicted quality is poor. So there's a problem here. And the problem lies in the mathematics, in fact, of the Zernikis. What is a low order aberration is a quadratic function. You know, it's a, a proportion of sphere or this kind of uh, chip shape here. But it distorts the um, center of the wavefront uh, predominantly, and that can be uh, corrected by spectacle. On the other hand, a higher order aberration is usually flat in the center. It does not interfere much with refraction, but it degrades visual quality for large pupils. And if you take a pure cubic function or, or a pure R to the fourth power, that's what you have. But with the Zernike, there is a mixture in some modes uh, with low order terms. There's also a confusion usually between modes and term. Mode is the whole equation. A term is, what, it is what, what's in the equation. But you can hear, you can hear, see that there's defocus in uh, Zernike and that's not negligible at all. So that explains a little bump in the sombrero, whereas we should have a flat center here. So uh, again, for these reasons, and you can see in the pyramid, some higher order mode are flat in the center here on the side, but in the center and the closest you get to the center of the pyramid, they show central distortions, which uh, 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 drift away from what the higher order aberrations should be. So for all the listed reasons here, we should move away from the journey keys. And uh, we uh, proposed um, recently a new a revisited classification where we have kept some Zernike modes on the side of the pyramid because these are fine, they are pure in their uh, radial degree. But in the center, as you can see now, if you compare, you find that the modes have a flat center, so they don't interfere much with paraxial refraction, and yet they have distorted periphery as they, they, they're here for, for that. But again, in a probably simpler uh, manner and simpler shapes. Uh, there is a clear cut, in other words, with the low and the high degree aberration. We have just published in the JRS, a JRS a paper recently, which is open access, and uh, it, it, it drives through clinical friendly expression the, 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 the role of these new modes, which again are flat or actually in cross-section here. So I think it's important because what you need 
as clinician is something which is really matching what you expect for pupils like in the human eye which are small or large depending on the uh, visual conditions whereas in a telescope it's quite different and uh, you see the aperture is obstructed in the center so Zernike may work well for telescope apertures or microscope ones but for human pupils it does not so again this is a post myopic lazy pupil analysis autorefractometry shows emetropia wavefront derived refraction from the Zernike shows myopia retinal image is not good and we must fix this if we want to move uh, forward again the explanation of this discrepancy here lies in this slide this is the actual wavefront of the patient on the left but because you have a Zernike decomposition for, for, for which the spherical aberration has defocused you must balance that defocus so you introduce an artifactual or artificial defocus coefficient just to make the uh, Zernike uh, flat here. But it's confusing for doctors and it should not be this way. And, uh, and also because you compute a retinal image with defocus inside, it blurs the image like myopia blurs the image. So it's not really go doing good. So in the new classification, uh, the spherical aberration mode is flat in the center. You see there's no distortion, there's no uh, defocus embedded. So if you now analyze the same eye as we did before with the new uh, modes, you see that still you can really see spherical aberration. The coefficient is much larger because Zernike is, because of this mixture, uh, minimizes in fact coefficient for some modes. Coma also is more rendered because there's no minimization like with the Zernikes. There's no more tilt because tilt was an artifact due to coma and defocus is now low and matches the clinical refraction. This is a Zernike predicted higher order image for a 2020 patient does not look good, but with the new classification for the higher order, you see what happens. Still good uh, um, sharp image, but low contrast, but still high frequency spatial resolution here. Uh, this is also when you derive other metrics, pot spread function shows what really happens, bright center, but a faint halo of the focus light around it. In the Zernike, this is not really what's uh, the realistic image prediction. You will underestimate your MTF, and yet with the new classification, you will probably have a better evaluation. So if you realize this, it's exciting because since 20 years, we have been using metrics which provides us with not or very suboptimal, uh, best corrected image quality. And when you read papers which uses Zernike, you are sometimes a bit disappointed because they, their conclusion should be revisited. Uh, I, I go briefly on this, but same, we have other interactions with, between coma and tilt, which explain this uh, tilt uh, issue, which is another rectifier. So what's more, most important probably for refractive surgeons is this classification is also uh, conceived to design better aspheric and crest biopic correction. Why that? Because if you just play with Zernike, you cannot really separate what you want to do with the high order aberration, which is paraxially neutral, but influence the refraction in the periphery and the defocus that comes with. And the defocus that comes with is four times in coefficient uh, titration what you have with the spherical aberration. It's huge. Uh, and in, in a nutshell, positive contains hyperopia, negative spherical aberration contains my, uh, myopia. So it's a big headache if you want to fix uh, presbyopic eyes using this kind of metric. Um, it has uh, also um, given rise to uh, interesting discussion in the past for those who use Alcon lasers. They know the C4, C12 interaction, which are exactly uh, what Alcon had to fix. And this is really caused by a simple mathematical uh, suboptimal uh, thing. Uh, this slide, I think, is the most important one because it helps you to understand something which is not really well explained in the literature. Yet, uh, uh, orange is the wavefront, blue is the uh, refraction effect of the wavefront on the pupil. So blue can be red in diopters. With the new classification as compared to the Zernike, there's no central myopia because there's no bump. The, the wavefront in orange is flat, so it's paraxially free, but you see how it modulates the uh, correction toward the periphery in a simple way without interfering with the central refraction. So this is what you can really use now to do press biopic aspheric correction because you know what you put in the center, you know what you put in the periphery, so you know the gradient of the refraction much better than with the Zernike where you have a shift. And we have submitted a paper where we show that when we modify the asphericity 
uh, using ASRIC profiles, we are neutral with the, uh, with, with the LDHD focus, whereas the Zernike shows like a spurious interaction with the Z40. And still we modify accordingly the LDHD. Also notice by a nice uh, chance that the amount of micron is very close to the dioptric. So you can read almost one by one on a six millimeter pupil, what you do in terms of coefficient with the new uh, G40 to what you do in diopters using the same uh, kind of unit. And finally, uh, we published also a paper where we could uh, really relevantly analyze the interaction between higher order and lower order operation. Dozens of papers have been written on that, but I think they are all, again, making a big assumption is that higher order aberration are pure and really specifically higher order. But if when you think about it, the higher order coefficient, uh, a mode in the Zernike for astigmatism contains a lot of low order astigmatism. So if you introduce this in a kind of, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, aberometer or um, a simulator, you will introduce, but you don't know that, a lot of low order Zernike. This is not anymore the case with the higher order modes for the new classification with, which are very flat in the center. So to finish, I just show you a patient coming for monoclear diplopia from first keratoconus because he's rubbed his eye a bit too much. Ask the patient, what do you see? Can you draw the, the smeared image you are perceiving? You, the patient does it. And when you do the comparison between the Zernike and the LDHG, there's an exaggeration here because of the low order astigmatism, which is coined in the high order astigmatism. Here you see it's more realistically matching the uh, patient's drawing. This is another eye example. You see Zernike predicted LDHD predicted patient's drawing, again, more accurately rendered with the LDHD. Th this is a, a paper we published in, uh, in, 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 in scientific report where I'm gonna cover this in two seconds. But again, here what you can do is now try really to address the question what kind of higher order content affects low order content? Because in the past, again, for those, all these interactions, you had like artifactual answers. And what we found uh, in this paper just published as well is that uh, you, if you use artificial intelligence and the new classification, you can improve the prediction of subjective refraction. But what's very interesting is that you now can see the importance of the feature which influence. So for defocus, spherical aberration, of course, influences the prediction of the defocus. And you can see also that coma, trifold influences direct or uh, against the rule astigmatism and other modes here are influencing oblique astigmatism. But now you are sure this is really the higher order aberration, not a mixture of hidden low order aberration uh, coded in the high order one. So I think for all the reasons I exposed you quickly, there are many expected benefits because it's, in one word, a new reference basis which works for human eye. It's conceived for ophthalmologists and it should allow us to improve the design and, uh, uh, and better anticipate the effect of sphere and cylinder of customized correction in the future. I hope so. Thank you for your attention.